Good afternoon, everyone. This is your Daily Bread Podcast, and it is your host, Sir Wheat Bread, and this is not your Daily Podcast, where Sir Wheat Bread talks about everything under the sun. And here I am again, your host, Sir Wheat Bread. How is everyone doing? Hello, how is it everyone doing? So before we start our podcast, I would like to put some a few rules into the podcast right here, because again, this uh podcast is going to be uploaded on youtube after this after a little bit editing so we have a few rules like the twitch alert will be muted but uh, we will acknowledge the follows sub bits donation and raids between segments um some of the channel point redemptions are also disabled so we could keep the flow of the podcast uh proper uh, say and i will not be able to read the chat real time when we are discussing uh, during different segments uh, but I will. There will be segments where I will ask the viewers as well. So um, before we continue with other segments, again, good afternoon. It's two thirty-one p.m. here in the Philippines. It's actually cloudy. And more uh, during the morning, it was a uh, very heavy rainfall, guys. It was. There's a heavy rainfall, but just a moment. Now it stopped. I'm here right now. It's. Uh, I turn on my air condition because it's around this time. It's a little bit hot. I have. But I still have a cup of coffee to keep my energy up during this podcast. So again, good afternoon. And like I said, before I proceed, the, um, I would like to acknowledge those who have followed me. Um, I Mac, thank you for the follow. Captain Big Mac, thank you for the follow. And Patikin, thank you for the follow as well. Hello, Honda James, thank you. How are you, Tomanegi? Hello, how are you as well? Uh, but say you done mute nope i was actually having a quick pause just for the editing purposes and thank you for the follow as well and razor and tomatoes hello how are you good afternoon now okay first things first it's august 10 2021 and it is my second year anniversary so i started streaming like i said before on was on facebook gaming I created a page called Sorry Wheat Bread Gaming, and my goal there was to stream, you know, uh, games. And uh, the first game that I was trying to stream was Death Garden. And unfortunately, when I started streaming, that game was about to die. And I, during that time, I don't have the Elgato HD60, the thing that you need, so you can stream on. Uh, you can stream Nintendo Switch games, so I have to find an alternative, which was Dead by Daylight. So for the most part of my stream on uh, on Facebook, majority of them was Dead by Daylight. Then after a few months, I was able to get the Elgato. That's why I started streaming other um, uh, Nintendo Switch games. Uh, for those who doesn't know, the first game that I streamed for a Nintendo Switch was... Uh, uh, it's Fire Emblem, uh, Three Houses, and I did the Black Lion route. I already did the Golden Deer off stream because you know, I bought the game because I, I was interested in the game. That's why I, bu- I bought it, played it, and I enjoyed it. Uh, then after, and I was uh, doing pretty well. Uh, please take note, when I was started streaming, I don't have any... Uh, well, what do I say? I don't have any webcam at all my uh, my inspiration for have, being a content creator was uh h2o delirious which is a youtuber who has around 10 million subscribers by now and he, nobody knows what he really looks like at least his uh, fans doesn't know and i would like to keep it that way also i don't really want to go uh to my own uh, my old ways where i was just like eat uh, work then sleep eat work sleep eat work sleep which is something that i don't like i do enjoy playing games but you know like sometimes work sometimes sleep you have to prioritize them so i added streaming as a reason for me to play games to discipline myself that i should have some time of my own so that's the reason why so that's that's what happened and after around the month of october I was active on watching Twitch streams, so I was like, you know what? 
I saw T Mikage. So everybody knows who T Mikage is right now. If you you know, she is a、uh, VTuber from Japan that streams on Twitch.、Uh, she is very close to her viewers, and I asked her.、Uh, she was using an avatar at the time, and I asked her what it is. At the time, she was using a live 2D, which inspired me. Like, okay, let's see if,、uh, if I could do this. I would just turn into a VTuber instead of someone who doesn't have.、Um, A face cam or an avatar to talk to, and that was on around、uh, February 2020 when、um, I debuted my first avatar. For、uh, pretty much a lot of people know what it looks like. It's just a simple piece of bread looking sideways, but it can move. Thus, Sirweed Bread was born at that time as a VTuber. Then you know、uh, that also the time when I got a lot of、uh, attraction on Facebook because it was the time of the pandemic and. I was playing,、um, what do you call this? I was playing one,、uh, Animal Crossing New Horizon, as well as the,、uh, I call this Animal Crossing New Horizon and Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, which is a very popular game at that time, and people got、uh, a lot of traction for me. Then after a few months, you know, I have different games to play. Enjoyed everything a lot. You know, Fall Guys. Keep playing Dead by Daylight. I played a lot of other games. Then, around、um, what do you call this? Around January of 2021, um, uh, Shiarpan, we know Shiarpan. She's the Doctor VTuber.、Uh, suggested to me that why not try Twitch, you know? And I was like, okay, I will try Twitch. Then, so at the very first stream of 2021, I started streaming on Twitch. Then I focus on, you know. Streaming on Twitch for a few months. Then right now, which is around it's August 2021, I am focusing on streaming on both platforms, which is Facebook on Twitch. There are a lot of stream. There are a lot of games that I play only on Twitch, and there are a lot of games I only play on Facebook. The games I can play on both.、Um, uh, what do you call this? On both platforms are the ones that doesn't really not、uh, doesn't have much progress.、Uh, Well, Minecraft has a lot of progress actually, but like Valorant,、uh, Pokemon Unite, which is you know, those are things that I、uh, enjoy a lot, and I could play it in both platforms, because given that I play a lot of Nintendo Switch games, they are like story driven, so I cannot just jump to different platforms. That's why right now it is August again, August ten, twenty twenty one. I am playing、uh, Monster Hunter Stories two on Twitch. Whereas I play Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on Facebook, and I don't put them on a different platform.、Uh, what else? And actually, that's the end of it. So during the journey between a VTuber, I've met a lot of people, met a lot of VTubers, met a lot of my viewers as well, and it was a fun ride. And I'm second, uh, uh, two years in in the streaming community, I would say. In the VTuber community, I would say it was February, so I was like more than a year now going to February next year. But yeah, I've been streaming for a quite a while now, so there are a lot of things I have done and I have stuff doing as well. I have tried a lot of new things.、Uh, one of them is this podcast. This is the first time I've, I've done a podcast before.、Um, I do just talking, but the difference with the podcast, in my my opinion, is that this should not be. Visual, wherein you could listen to me, like just listen to me. You don't need to watch my stream, which is an option actually on Twitch. If you like,、uh, if you think about it, there's an audio version,、um, audio settings of that. So, what else?、Uh, so, like, if I upload this and put a blank page, and you could still get the context of it. I don't need to show everything. That's the sense of the podcast. Whereas in just chatting, you know. I fr- you could frequently talk to people. You could see the chat and everything. This t- this one is no. I there should be no visual at all. That's why my setup right now on stream for those who are you know, for those who are watching just on stream, this the setup is just actually simplified. Just for the reminders that you know, some alerts are muted. So that's what it looks like right now. Because what I'm gonna do maybe in the future is that maybe、uh, find a website where. Um, I can upload the MP3 version of this game,、uh, of this uh, uh, VOD, so you could listen it 
uh, historically. So you can listen just by listening, you don't need to watch it. For now, I'm gonna put it all the vods on uh, YouTube. Do a little bit of editing, so make sure that they're, they're like I said, I'm gonna acknowledge all those uh, notifications between segments. So I'm gonna remove that on the vod, edit that. That's why I I'm not uh, not acknowledging those alerts yet, but I do see them though. So again, thank you so much. And also removing that. That's why the reason why I removed the channel point redemption because some of my um, channel point redemption are visual, like changing my avatar or maybe like saying something i remove all of that so that will not be included in the vod as well that is those types of uh, child part redemption is very good for for a stream but on a podcast it's like it will just destroy the flow entirely ideally podcast is not really much of a live you know in sense like trash taste is not live um I'll probably the, um sorry about in Japan podcast it's not on live um, but after a uh, trash taste after dark is actually a live stream but I have not watched that I have seen clips but I haven't watched the entirety of it so I don't know how the setup is Ide- ideally podcast is not really as a live thing so I do apologize if I can watch it immediately so before we moving on to the next segment which is um some a little bit announcements before we continue uh, again let's read the notification again uh razor and tomato thank you for the sub and as well as help people right here right now uh katsuo is gonna lurk hello thank you for the lurk as well and as you can see i put a podcast reminder that i might not able to read all of those <laughs> alerts and chats right away again thank you for the sub razor and tomatoes i can see that hello hello that is a wonderful emote uh honda james there you go i'll get back to you about that again guys this it's not it's my anniversary my second year anniversary it is not my birthday that's why leading me to my announcement on august 13 that will be on a friday august uh, again august 13 starting at 10 a.m manila standard time um i will be uh having my very first subathon it will be a at least a 12 hour stream i could go longer to be honest because i don't have i don't have anything to do so there are a lot of redemptions there by subs oh yes i've got to have i have a subathon so i will show it on um i'm not going to show it on the screen so you could see it also on the stuff but again the goal of the subathon is to get me more emote slots that's why there is no incentive if you're going to give me bits or give me donations it's focused on gifting subs or getting a sub there's a lot of activities which i will announce tomorrow as well over on my twitter you can check it out check it out but again i invite you everyone to go to the subathon um yeah before we proceed with the next segment let's re- read the comments a little bit oh no subathon haha <laughs> sana dun na lang ako nag sub joke <laughs> don't worry at bits uh, unfortunately i won't do bits like i said because we want more emo slots we we have a lot of emo, uh we have a limited uh, emo slots right w- as well there is also um what do you call this there's a lot of um interaction with the viewers as well during the subathon so i would like to invite you guys there as well um actually that's all right now for the announcement because the other announcement will be the podcast but we're doing it right now so next next in the segment is why did uh sir Wheatbread had a post- podcast right now instead of before right so there's a big uh, question to some like a lot of people ask me already that i have a good voice i have an excellent voice like i don't technically believe that that i have one because like you know if you're if you're you you don't really see your voice as good other people say that your voice is good and i don't think um take uh, one's uh, compliment just for them it's like if somebody said it's good like okay but if a lot of people say it's like maybe oh maybe it really is good so and a lot of people are suggesting me why not do a podcast and for me is like i could i would like to have a podcast but the podcast thing is like there's a lot of steps you have to do to be honest i was like up as early as um, 9 a.m right now double checking everything so i would be ready for the podcast and there's a lot of segments into it and in my opinion podcast should have like two people 
discussing about stuff but given that this is a pilot episode i'm not really looking for somebody else right now if this podcast uh, suck, uh you know got a lot of positive reviews i would uh get somebody else i already have like two people that i would like to uh invite to be the co-host at least for one or two episodes so please watch out for that if this succeeds i will proceed with that one and we're going to talk different types of topics so so and i was like you know why not i'll just do a podcast if it uh gain a lot of positivity like people enjoy enjoy it then i would do more episodes it will be like a monthly thing and at the most it could be like twice a month which is very weird considering the name is your daily bread which is um what i did is search for um suggested a podcast name and one of them is like your daily something and i was like your daily bread which is somewhat similar to the popular book religious book which is our daily bread so it's like it's a good one the other one was always being suggested will be bread talk which is but you know you understand it's it's a copyright name so we cannot use bread talk so i stick to the your daily bread nobody owns that copyright and if somebody uses it beforehand i have it as you know i am using it right now so i i got dibs so right now the podcast name is your daily bread um in the future i would ask somebody to have a logo on it and uh you know right now it's still a pilot episode so some of the segments are a little bit you know um weird and stuff like that and uh hopefully we could you know do more of this if you guys enjoy it as well all right well hold up guys i'll just drink a cup of coffee all right there you go so let's go to our main topic right now which is vtubers i just like i said i just want to talk about sir we me my history and my second year anniversary just briefly because our main topic for today is about vtubers because apparently there's a lot of a lot of weird definition of what our vtubers are so before we begin with our segments again let's say hello uh talk look at the chat again bread talk yes bread talk that was one of the possible names of it but bread talk is actually a copyright name so i cannot use it well base i can because it's in the state of being a con uh not as a bread shop but it's a podcast but i don't want to be uh, i want to confuse people that's why i stick to your daily brand which i'm i'm gonna stick with it because it sounds it sounds really good i do enjoy it a lot i like the name okay let us proceed now with a segment vtubers there are a lot of them i mean crazy a lot of them right now and people does not um uh, there are people who has different opinions and different meaning to the word vtubers and we want to talk about that uh like like i said i started uh i am technically a vtuber last february of 2020 because during the time of august 10 of 2019 all the way before uh, february i wasn't ha- wasn't uh using any webcam and i don't have any avatar yet so i was just like your normal streamer who doesn't have a webcam and i'm you know then i was watching twitch and found um team mikage which is the one who inspired me to have an avatar and during that time she has a live 2d that's why my avatars are live 2d um, right now she is uh having her 3d model right now she's using it and she has uh she makes clothes on uh, or 3d models and you could check it out over her, on her channel a shout out again to team mikage She's a big inspiration and she's a lighthearted uh, streamer and VTuber as well. I really recommend her watching her and you will always see me uh, on her stream. I always uh, watch her. Now she streams normally at 6 p.m. Manila time or 7 p.m. Uh, GST. Except on Wednesdays. Her break was on Wednesdays. 
Wednesdays. And on Saturday, Sunday, she streams early. I forgot. I think it's like、uh, 12 noon in Japanese time and or 11 p.m. here in the Philippines. So I decided to have an avatar and thus I became a VTuber. Then,、um, to my knowledge,、uh, to my knowledge before, I was. I thought I was like the very first VTuber in Facebook because the thing is, when I was doing the avatar thing, I was like, I don't see anyone doing this in the Philippines at all. Like, I w- remember at this time, I wasn't looking for streamers on Twitch and I don't watch streams on YouTube because all I watch on YouTube are travel videos, mostly in Japan or the Vanus Crew. So the concept of VTubers. I don't know apart from Kizunai. For those who don't know, I think majority considered Kizunai is one of the popular VTubers out there when the term VTuber was not a thing. So she was like just an AI who is a content creator. The term VTuber was not there. So, like I said, I go, um, so. When I go to YouTube, I just watch travel videos, majority of Japan, because I do love go, I do want to go to Japan. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the very first VTuber here in the Philippines. Then I will just make an avatar, and that's it. I'll be the first one. And into my knowledge, I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was. Well, technically, in February 2020, I thought I, I, thought I was, and I realized that. Other platforms such as Twitch, such as YouTube, there are a lot of PH VTubers already. So basic, and technically, I'm not the very first VTuber. I thought it, the, the concept was unique at that time because, like, people, why are not people doing this? Like, life, well, well, I think people are having difficulty because Life 2D was in Japanese at that time. It's、so、like, people will not. People will not try to make Life 2D models here in the Philippines because you cannot understand that. That, is, was, that was my logic. So that's why I went to Fiverr and asked somebody to rig it. Okay, I have an avatar. I will probably the very first feature over here. Little did I know that there's a bigger, <laughs> there is a growing community of VTubers that is streaming on Twitch and on YouTube. And the very first VTuber. That was, I realized that a month after I have an avatar. It was March because during that March,、uh, I met other VTubers during that time, which is Himepai and Koro.、Uh, yeah, Koro. During that time, they were the first one that I met as, as a fellow VTuber at that time. And I did a little bit more research and later found out that there's such thing as Hololive. There's a, such a thing as Niji Sanji. So, Niji Sanji is also like a group of VTubers in Japan. Whole life is also the same, just different companies. You know what to do. Then, I was like surprised. Like, there are a lot of people that are <laughs> that are already using the avatar. And one of them would be Kahiru. Kahiru I saw Kahiru, and、uh, it's not March anymore. It, it was a long process for me to understand there's a lot of VTubers in the Philippines. Then it's like, I w- I'm not the very first one. So, like, oh well, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I'll just keep on streaming. <laughs> Then, later found out that、um, a lot of people i s getting confused now on the term VTubers because, to their mind, VTubers is a shorter term for virtual、uh, YouTubers. And if you say YouTubers, they are content creators over on the YouTube channel. But as you can see, there are suddenly、um, content creators coming from Facebook, coming from Twitch, and people are like, You're not a VTuber. You're not streaming on. You don't have a YouTube channel. You don't, you're not a VTuber. And it was like, this, It was confusing time. It's like, What are we called then? Like V-book, VBooker or V streamers? There, is like an, there was a, com- a brief period. Even today, some people do e s not accept the concept that people who stream on Twitch are VTubers, but it's less compared to before, which is very confusing. So, what happened is that like, there is a weird definition now on what is a VTuber is. 
at that time. Even now, you cannot. Nobody can really define what a VTuber is, because people has different interpretation. Which that's what um that's why I asked on Twitter a few days ago on what uh if somebody points a gun on your head and ask you what are VTubers define them, and that's what and like in my mind it's like okay they will say what they really think of VTubers are, so you know. That's uh, that's that actually. I got a lot of uh, answers, and we're gonna go through all of them again, all of them, because I really want the interaction of everyone as well. I really do enjoy it. I really do enjoy the answers. I asked them on Facebook, and I also asked them on Twitter, and it was a very, very interesting answer to all. But I would like to talk about my definition of VTuber first, because if you um, if you think about it, there is. My definition is very, very broad, and if you take into account my definition, it will just like there's a lot more VTubers out there that does not def- does not uh, say that they are VTubers, but you know there's uh, they are technically not VTubers, but they are by definition. So before we continue. My definition, again, my definition as a VTubers are basically any content creator that uses a virtual avatar. That is, for me, the most uh, basic definition of a VTuber. I think that is the most accepted one. So in my definition, it doesn't matter where you stream. As long as you use a virtual avatar and... You stream, and you st- not necessarily stream. You also post videos. As long as you're a content creator and you have a virtual avatar, you are a VTuber. That's how that's how I defined it. Um, for those who doesn't know, again, VTubers already exist long before. Again, one of the most popular ones before the term VTuber was being used frequently was Kizuna Ai, and there are a lot of VTubers during the time of Kizuna Ai as well, but. Kizuna Ai is the most popular one because she I think she was the very first one who had a million subscribers. During the time where a million subscribers is a big thing. Because right now we have a million subscri- subscribers like, okay. But, you know, <laughs> YouTube is very, very, you know, g- growing very fast. And sometimes like it, it, it feels like it's not a big achievement to get a million subscribers by some. But well, if you're a content creator and you have a million sub, you will be happy. But in the eyes of the viewers, like, oh, you just have one million sub, you're not that popular, you know. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> so then, Hollow Life was um, uh, brought the concept in my in my knowledge. It was Hollow Life that brought the concept of uh, virtual uh, VTubers streaming. Because during the time Kizuna I has two channels, which is the I Games, Kizuna I Games, and the Kizuna I, the main channel. And if if I can remember correctly, the Kizuna I Games is not um, solely for live streaming. It's just uh, sometimes there's live streaming, sometimes it's just vods of it. The Kizuna I channel is just like a video, like every week, if I can remember correctly. And it's just random stuff. It's like idle stuff just talking stuff it's just random stuff random content that you would see in Kizuna Ai at the time I do apologize with the other VTubers during the time of Kizuna Ai's uh, I, cannot, I could say I could say peak actually because I don't watch them with the whole reason that they are in Japanese and you know even though there are translations I can't I would rather you know watch someone that I could understand it that's why I, I don't watch Hollow Live and Niji Sanji as much. Um, I watch more indies or the V Sojo ones because you know they speak in English. So I'm sorry about that. So it was around 2020 when the pandemic hit all over the world, and the big hit of it is the anime industry. In the anime industry, um, a lot of the blue chip anime that will be supposed to be coming out. It was uh wait is it spring right i was spring 2020 um none of them came out 
none of them came out. A lot of them got delayed. So people is looking for an alternative. And in comes Kiryu Koko. In, and Kiryu Koko is a um, talent in Hololive. He's also a VTuber. She's a dragon. And um, what uh, differs her to others is that she has she can speak English fl- fluently she can speak English fluently I can't remember her lore and such but I think she mentioned that she studied in the US that's why she can or grew up in the US and went back to Japan that's why she can speak fluently. don't comment me on that one uh, I haven't I know I haven't researched on how Kirikoko was able to speak fluent English but being her able to um being uh able to speak fluent English attract a lot of viewers a lot of attract um eyes on Hololive and that also started some people all around the world who were anime watchers at the time and cannot cannot watch any anime at that point like they started watching the Hololive again I'm I'm solely focusing on Hololive because Hololive was the center of of VTubers when you know when all of the boom of the VTubing happened and there's also it already exists before but there's also like um, clippers that translate the some moments on the Hololive streams and conver- uh, translate to English which is what I what I watch if I watch Hololive I actually watch their clips rather than the whole stream because like I said Hololive is focusing on Japanese viewers so they are speaking uh, speaking in Nihongo which are the Japanese language then after that there you go it started booming everywhere um, it has um, gained a lot of attraction during that time even now actually even now they get a lot of attraction and uh, hmm then uh, Hololive introduces uh, the Hololive EN, which is Hololive, but um, they're the talents on that Hololive EN are English speaking ones. And you know, Gaugura grew very fast and got a million, million sub in span of uh, months, which is in the growth of a VTuber, which is unprecedented. It's like it's very, very fast. Uh, Kizun and I took like years to get a million sub. And Gura did it in months, and with the uh, Gura's uh, growth, all of her, actually, all of the talents in Hololive EN are already like a million subs, and the Japanese talents of Hololive also are uh, slowly growing, uh, growing as well to a million subs. So, so you you could see that the popularity of Hololive is very, uh, you know, you could see it everywhere. And it's still growing. I, I believe that the uh, the VTube community is still growing. I'm not just saying that it is centered around whole life anymore, because the in the in the community, the word, uh, indie defined as like they're just VTubers that is not working on their company. They are very very popular on Twitch, uh, YouTube. Yes, but uh, it's more popular on Twitch because. Twitch is a platform for for streaming, and you know sometimes if you're a VTuber, people would see look for streams rather than YouTube videos, in my opinion, because that's that was what was uh, Hololive Life doing. So people are looking for that. Then, um, yeah, I, uh, in the in the side of VTubers are is very strong right now. Uh, they were well. Well, v-, v Sojo is very strong right now as well. Most of majority of those uh, v, Shobo, uh, v Shojo talents streams on Twitch. So they are uh, for those who doesn't know, V Shojo is a VTuber company that is uh, that is uh, the CEO of it is Run Gun, right? Run Gun is his name. Oh my god! I should should be researching all of this before we start, right? Uh, and you know, and he was uh, right now. He is there is no 
I think apart from Hime Hajime, all of their talents are are like recruits. Um, Iron Mouse, Ventrea, I think Apricot or you know Apricot, uh Vey Bay is also recruited. Project Melody is recruited. So I think um Hime Hajime is the only one that is uh that is not recruited. Uh, that was um, made by V Sojo. All of the rest are recruited. I, uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure with uh, Apricot and uh, Vebe because I only saw Vebe and Apricot um, over, you know, over on uh, when they were they joined V Sojo. But I don't know if they were VTubers or indie VTubers before. Oh, I forgot to mention Yanners. I think I for, did I forgot somebody on V Show. I think I mentioned all of them now. I do apologize if I did not, uh, if I forgot somebody. <laughs> all right. So, so right now I would say it's growing, but is a plateau. Is it? Well, right. Well, I could say I think it's still growing, but you know, it's growing slowly right now it's not not like before when before it's any vtubers that debuts would just fly off right now you know they are still growing in a phase of that and yeah that is just basically it on the vtubing side so before we continue with the next segment, okay, let's read some uh, of the comments right here. Uh, like I said, the rules of this uh, podcast is that the Twitch alerts are muted for the podcast because I will be uploading this on YouTube and we I don't want to, you know, do pings. But I will acknowledge your follows, uh, subs, bits, donation raids in between segments segments which is right now also some of the channel points are disabled so we have a proper flow of the show and i will not able to read your chat real time but i can read them between segments or if i ask for interaction from the viewers right now so let's uh let's read some of the comments right now from james honda one abroad in japan and chris or chris broad i think this is the time when i ask what are the videos that i'm watching on youtube and yes one of the one of the japanese uh travel video uh channels that i watch is abroad in japan that's one of many uh abroad in japan i think right now is the biggest one for japanese related content but there's a lot more like Paolo from Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Lens, Tokyo Creative. There's a lot more actually. Um, the Japan Guide is also good. Um, the Anime Man is always showcasing as well as Japanese related, as well as uh, Connor C Dog VA. Um, and uh, Akira is also showcased some, some, but more she's more on the creepy side of japan whereas like the otaku killer and stuff that I, I watch mo- a lot of those of her uh from racer and tomatoes you are the first uh vtuber i know e- oh thank you so much i think that will be that will be true on facebook yeah on facebook so it means uh racer and tomatoes you knew some vtubers outside oh most likely kizuna i then did you make your own avatar uh like i said before i did not make my own avatar i um uh i commissioned someone on fiverr to make the avatar as well kuro okay i don't know okay kurogami amagiri uh yeah i know him months a few months in when i started vtubing yeah um sayas his sayastro uh said it's true uh when i saw this pop out it was he was talking about the uh, how I define V2, which I'm gonna get back into it as well. Uh, Wendell, hello, how are you? As well as Mr. Turtle, hello, how are you? Hi, YouTube. <laughs> we're not, we're not on YouTube. We're gonna post this on VOD as well. Uh, like I said, the VOD might not include the chat as well because we're gonna focus on, um, just the voice, just the voice. Um, Fire Fire One, hi, hello as well. Hello, how are you? Again from Wendell. You'll upload this on Spotify too, Sir Bread. I think they'll be looking to for podcast stuff. 
um i have to check first if i need to pay spotify for this right now i'm gonna i'm gonna try to upload the vod over on youtube then look for other platforms that i could save uh, the podcast but right now i don't think i would put this in other platforms apart from youtube because again this is a pilot episode i want to know if people do enjoy this type of podcast because if they do again the next step is get um set up for another episode look for a co-host because i think it will be more effective if there are other people in the podcast instead of me just talking non-stop right won't you agree on that one so i think people would uh, enjoy um there is an interaction i'm interacting with somebody else then we have interaction with other chat so uh, we'll see if this uh, this is a success, I will I would do that one hundred percent. I would do that one hundred percent. Okay, let's jump back to the definition of VTubers. Like I said, my definition of VTubers is just content creators, regardless of what platform you you are, you and you stream or you have a virtual uh, virtual avatar. It means you are a VTuber. Which is funny because a lot of people know know this because like a lot of people are asking like who is the very first VTuber in the Philippines? And a lot of people have a lot of answers, a lot of answers. Like and majority of of them is would say Kahiru. Because if I can remember correctly, Kahiru started streaming at uh, 2000, 2016. 2016 was the first uh was uh, the date uh, account created for her channel, making her a VTuber before the term VTuber was popularized. So she do, you know, she does accept that title. She um, it, deserving of that title. And I remember, yeah, it's May 17. No, it's 2018. 2018. Which is, you know, people accept that. And but however, <laughs> however, when I when you define somebody that uh, define who are the v- VTubers at content creators that use a virtual avatar, there is a lot more <laughs> like big kind of beans, you know, big kind of beans. Because like I said, if you're gonna define some uh, a VTuber as uh, a content creator that does um, that has a virtual avatar then one of them would be Akosi Doggy so for those who does not know who he is Akosi Doggy is a very popular content creator in the Philippines people um, he started uh, his uh, YouTube channel around 2005 that is that is very very long 2005 so, and a lot of people like does not consider him as a first VTuber because he doesn't say it as such. However, <laughs> however, you know, it is a uh, you cannot deny that he uses an, a virtual avatar. Uh, but to be fair, uh, his first known and public video is dated twenty seventeen. March 7th, 2017. Despite that, she he is much old, older, right? So he was the one of the very first uh, people who uses a uh, virtual avatar. He is known to be playing Mobile Legends. He that's how he got popular. Um, for those who doesn't know, if if I can, if I can remember correctly, if you saw the old. Um, Mobile Legends commercial where there's a dog playing um, Mobile Legends, that would be probably him, who has a gaming headset on. That would be probably him. I think at that time he was speaking also in Eng- uh, English as well, which is very funny. Um, then he stopped being a quote unquote VTuber and start doing IRL stuff when there was a bug in the face rig wherein his face was revealed. I think there was a there's still a lot of videos circling around when he was still using his avatar then the face rig bug and it shows his face 
um i cannot say if it's intentional and i cannot you know but there it is and after that he started to do a lot more content outside of uh playing mobile legends because you know given that you are an irl uh content creator now you know an actual person there's a lot of things that you can do that you cannot do as a vtuber and that what happened so he stopped uh using the avatar now um is he the oldest one right now if that's the case uh it, he, it, we could you could like okay we could accept that he is the uh some of you might accept that he is the very first vtuber out there however some people might agree okay maybe he is the first one maybe but he might not be the oldest one i seen the most oldest one who is still streaming right now um for me if you're gonna look for the oldest one the, the oldest one would probably would probably be bobon gamer Bobon Gamer. Um, if you don't know who he is, Bobon Gamer is a streamer on Facebook that does not use the Live 2D model, the Live 2D um, Cubism. Does it have a 3D avatar as well? But he uses a different software. It's the I I can't remember the name of it, but it's the Adobe. It's an Adobe software that is uh, designed for animation. So. His avatar is actually stiff. Uh, it's stiff. It doesn't move like this, but it's still an avatar. And like Jose Dog, he plays Mobile Legends. He is still very, very popular. Um, Bobong, uh, Bobong Gamer. His uh, art style is uh, uh, in the cartoon side. And if you look at um, his Facebook page right now, he's not the only one who's streaming there as well. There is that pig small pig who, who plays mobile legends as well but yeah bobon gamer is one of those people who is still using avatar for streaming are i have not seen any pictures of him irl and i think only a few people knows what he really looks like which is similar to how h2o delirious is so as you can see like when when i brought out that uh, meaning of that okay vtubers are content creators that just use virtual avatar and i gave that argument okay these people are also vtubers a lot of people disagreed a lot of people disagreed because there are like content creators that use avatar but doesn't define them as uh, vtubers uh, one example would be core um, she's well known for the vr chat the hamburger country th uh, thing uh, she doesn't consider herself as a VTuber um, and her justification was I'm not a I'm not a I don't give fan service like what Hololife does because Hololife does like fan service right and I'm, and I'm not talking about the fan service anime style right the, you know the singing and uh, you know the, all the stuff which is acceptable uh, acceptable uh, you know stuff and she was uh using avatar before vtubing was you know a term as well uh Mik well unlike also mikage as well does not well mikage sings though and gives those type of fan service and uh identify herself as a vtuber you know and bobo gamer and agot doggy from my knowledge has not said that they were or they are a vtuber there is no video of that or there's no new use to it which is if you think about it think about it uh last year there was an issue right where pokemon tried to become a vtuber and people got angry so you cannot be a vtuber we know your face now like there's a lot of weird stuff that was uh being thrown out on what a vtuber is so what i did is i go to twitter i asked them of okay how would you define the vtubers because there's a lot of things you know oh let me remind uh let me give a short story as well i, I was on facebook before and there was there was an ongoing argument before it and that i joined on how it defines a vtuber and 
it was like so funny because at the time I was already a VTuber. Um, they, uh, it was a Pokemon issue as well. Like she can't be a VTuber. It's like, like oh, why? She has an avatar. It's like she has to like have a song cover and such. Like I don't have a song cover. At the time I don't do song covers. I mean right now I don't do song covers. It's like so I'm not a VTuber. It's like, it's like you are. Like but I don't do song covers. Like it's just so funny. It's like just destroying their meaning. It's just like I said, there should um, a lot of people have a different definitions of VTubers, and you know, I wanna see what they, uh, what is VTubers for them, honestly. So before we jump to the segment where I uh, check on how they define as VTubers, I like it. Like I said, I'm gonna read first those who are on Twitter the thing that I asked, and I wanna see what their answer is after that. For those who are watching right now, for you, how would you define a VTuber, right? So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna use a exclamation point question so you would see what was the question about, what, uh, how would you define VTubers? I wanna know for those who are watching right now, if you haven't commented on the Twitter, you know? And again, before we um, continue with the segment from Wendell Wendell, that is true, Tema used model but does not consider herself as a VTuber. Yeah, um, that that's what makes it very, very weird. I mean, <laughs> a bit confusing, right? Like, she is a VTuber but uh, doesn't tell her as such, which is Core. Core is also, I'm not a VTuber but she's, she's an avatar, so what? <laughs> it's very, very confusing though, you know? And I just saw it, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tortle. Why is it Mr. Turtle? Thank you for the follow. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. Now let's proceed. So I asked over on Twitter and on Facebook on if some. Oh, I'm gonna. Okay, I asked is I need your help. If someone points a gun on your head and told you to define what a VTuber is, he will shoot you. And what is your answer? Or else he will sh shoot you. And I said I may or may not use your answer on future stream, which is actually a lie because when I posted this, I was very adamant that okay, I will be streaming. I'm gonna do a podcast. So there's a lot of questions um, over here, uh, a lot of answers here on Twitter. There's also some question uh, answers here over on Facebook. So you know what? Let's see. Let's see. Um, this one was for from uh, uh, Kuyuki Himiko, and uh, Himiko said, "You must be the dumbest person alive, pointing gun at me for an answer that you can easily find online. Go ahead, shoot me and ruin your life. You will never get an answer out of me, which is very, very weird. Remember, guys, if somebody has a gun on your head, don't try to value your life and just answer the question next time." From Cypher, this is one of uh, a mod of Lyric Guy, if I can remember correctly. Cypher said, a new genre of content making anime real, but then again, there's no time limit. I won't mind walking around with a guy pointing gun at my hand all the time. Okay, uh, keyword here, like anime, which is, yes, it is true because um, majority of the viewers during the time, you know, are anime watchers as well i mean i mean majority of the vtubers are also anime fans so it is actually very very good to hear that you know vtubers are like an anime are animes that you could interact with and it is very very uh you know makes sense however if you look at twitch right now um there are a lot of vtubers that is not their avatar is not uh, anime inspired or at least I don't know if they watch anime which is actually very good very interesting it means that VTubing is expanding now not just for people who watch anime or people who likes Japan it's already evolving uh, as well who they are I like I said the keyword there was anime because a lot of people who watch as VTubers are most likely watch as anime as well but like I said, there are also a lot of VTubers there that, that their avatar are not anime inspired. Um, one of this example was Honey Goblin. Honey Goblin is one of the VTubers that I 
discovered that is very very adorable and it's more leaning to the western style of drawing which is very good i like i like her avatar a lot um you could check her out uh, her name is honey goblin on twitter and on twitch i do recommend her uh, she, she is uh, adorable she's a goblin hence the name honey goblin right <laughs> Okay, for um, Mikata, an online personality that is hidden under a 2D and 3D model, which is actually somewhat true. Um, somewhat true. Um, hidden is keyword, but you know, there are also VTubers out there right now that does not is like open to reveal what they look like or what they do. Uh, which is you can find a lot of twit on Twitter. Also, actually on Facebook as well, there are also a lot of uh, VTubers that show their faces right now, which is very, very fine. You know, it's fine. Like there is no really restriction. If you showed your face and you're still using, a, you know, an avatar for your content or on your streaming, it's, it's just fine, right? It's just fine. So. I do I agree with the online personality that uses uh, a model, but I don't, you know, you don't really hide because there are people that show them as well. That show them as well. Okay, um, that was from Mikata. Uh, it's Mikata Luce. Then there is a uh, Soul Spade. Um, he said, it's like being in a mecha pilot but your mecha is an anime girl on the internet actually that is actually very true there was also a reply to that by Hapachan. he said omg this auto in check audio out check mocap check ready deploy in three two one all systems online which is actually true it's like it's a mecha or a puppet that you control which is very very true if you think about it because uh, there are also VTubers that change their avatar style. Keyword style. It does not mean that changing your outfit. It, it, that doesn't count. Because in, in the sense of the VTuber, you, know, you just change clothes. But there are some that changes their style. Like from 2D to 3D or different art style. Which is there is a lot of it. Uh, what else? Um, who are who did that? There are a lot of people who do does that. You no, know, you know, which is which is very very interesting. It's very interesting to see uh, see about it actually. Again, um, one more from uh, Rion. I dare him to shit me instead, guys. Value value look, your life, guys. <laughs> value your life. It is very you know. Don't just you know if somebody point a gun on your head follow what they do don't try to be a hero just follow what they said because you have a gun on your head okay uh from ghosty uh ghosty i think she is a sweden sheep uh found her in the recommendation page and she said virtual boing <laughs> and replied i'm sorry but i'm not regretting for this answer which is oddly true it, uh, majority of the vtubers that are popular right now a majority of them are it has have a female avatar and they have a lot of jiggle physics some of them are realistic and some of them is like they are moving on their own <laughs> they're moving on your own which is very very true but if you think about it uh, having those jiggle physics is quite popular in the avatar especially if you have a female avatar it's very very popular and well known if i can remember correctly uh Hollow Live used to have this physics, this specific physics. They have theirs, but I think they slowly remove them, and you can only see their jiggle physics of their avatar during um, membership stream. Don't count me on this one because I remember that I think Hachama posted that that they remove her her avatar's jiggle physics except uh, during membership stream. Which is very, very weird. Like, okay, I'm going to pay you additional money just to see a life 2D wife who move her boobs. That is just weird. <laughs> weird to say, but, you know, there's more to it than membership stream, guys. There's more to it. Case in point, I'm I um, I'm very active in membership streams of Lurka. It's not just like 
there's no jail physics in there actually it's more of like interacting with uh, with Lyrica more and play games with her which is I do enjoy a lot uh, from Budo Palton said they're basically uh, they're basically streamers but instead of flesh blood and fat they made of pixels lots and lots of pixels mm, yeah I actually that is somewhat uh, close I would say it's, it's somewhat close to my um uh, to my definition, it's it just more detailed. He added with flesh, blood, and fat, and replaced you know virtual to like pixels. A lot of their pixel, which is actually true. Um, two D or three D, you are made of a pixel. Um, for come off, come off. Uh, this is uh, come off is a VTuber who is a mug. I met him before. Um. I met him long before I played uh, I played the um, TF2 with him twice with Ratnek. He said uh, a content creator that use a fictional representation of themselves this represents can range from sus uh, superficial look looks to an entirely narrative around them but I would also point out that it's a budding genre of media so the definition of tr and traits shifts around a lot and then I headbutt the bullet to assert dominance. Okay, so which is true? Like um, before, um, before if you're you're a VTuber, you should only like be on YouTube. Then they they start accepting that you're also a VTuber, even though you stream on Twitch. Then before you should like okay, you should do this and that. Like you should do covers, do a debut stream, do an introduction video, so you could be a VTuber and. People still accept you as a VTuber, even though you don't don't do that anymore. Uh, which I, I, I understand with uh, come off what saying here is that uh, there is you cannot fully identify the meaning of VTuber yet because there are a lot of things that is coming out that is that can be defined as a VTuber. And uh, that's key point of the fictional representation representation of themselves because majority of the VTubers actually majority of them have a lore and their lore is like actually if you there's like a meme right now it's like i am a demon lord came from the other world and i will start streaming which is very very weird for the lore though there's a lot of those things and yeah um there are also vtubers out there that doesn't have much of a lore it's like i'm just a streamer who has an avatar <laughs> it's, it's a mixed bag though it's a mixed bag um what I've learned is that the lore is very will help you gain attention, but you'll eventually, you know, you may just stick in the character, but your lore like be long forgotten. There, um, if I can remember correctly, there are a lot of streamers that I watch that sticks to character in the first few months. And after a few months, they're just like, I'm just talking regularly, talking normally, you know, just like that. Which is actually it's not bad to be honest. It's not bad. It's, it's their choice. Uh, like me, I'm just taking character. I'm just a bread, you know. But I could be like an. I can talk if when I uh, my behavior on stream is like I am an IRL person, except for some moments that you know. Can can you can I can they eat me? Obviously, I can't say that as a person. I'm gonna say that as a bread because if I say that as a person, it's like. E <laughs> Okay, from Rick Air. Rick Air. Rick Air 2. His answer is I would show them Pekora's introduction. That's the only real choice here. Actually, that is actually. Um, well, he didn't define what a VTuber is, but let's talk about that. Before, um, when I was a VTuber on February, I didn't do any introduction video, and the debut stream was non existent. So if you're gonna VTuber, you'll just pop out of nowhere, basically. And um, the more popular approach at that time was do introduction video, which I have right now, which is already an, a year old, and it's actually very, very outdated. Because if I can remember correctly, there's also an uh, Instagram account there. I I think I don't have a Twitch account there as well in the introduction video. So I might do an updated one. I I don't know. 
but yeah before you, you just need to make a video but right now the they're following the trend that uh hololive did was to you know okay we're gonna make a debut stream this time and there are people who which is very weird because there are people does there are vtubers that already streaming and they call it uh we are the pre-debut streams and we're gonna do a debut after this which is very weird some of them doesn't use an avatar some of them use their actual avatar then okay we're gonna have a debut which is very very weird you know very very weird but yeah it's just very interesting how it evolved from just making an introduction video to you have to stream it from elias uh Gadenza. it said youtuber with extra steps which is technically true because actually all the things that a vtuber does it can be done by content creators as well well with the exception of putting a png on your f actually they could do that they could do that with an ai but yeah it has extra steps if you're gonna stream or you could do videos you have to have a, set up the avatar and stuff so it, it is true it is true there's a lot of extra steps to be a vtubers but you know it's the extra step that you're willing to take just to you know to have a character i would say from hmm f i don't know man and his uh the twitter handle is shroom system honestly speaking i'll be panicking so just really random like people avatar not real face do things normal people do actually no yeah just like it's another argument for, in my ends like what vtuber the vtubers content it can be done by irl streamers as well or irl content creators as well i i don't see i have not seen any content that only a vtuber is capable to do capable of doing because what a vtuber does a, con a normal streamer or a normal content creator can do, do it as well and like I said, there is also there are a lot of things that an IRL streamer, an IRL content creator, can do, but the VTuber cannot. Case in point, a uh, daily vlog. It's weird to have a daily vlog and your, your actual daily vlog, like IRL daily vlog. You could do it, but you're gonna like I don't. It depends. Like, can you do it like a real IRL or just like? direct a scene like make moving objects on the screen there's you know IRL stuff uh, travel videos those uh, you know there are a lot of things that you can't do as a VTubers and you think about it is limiting <laughs> from Brian Hyde or can't me can't underscore me one two three he said mmm boobas like I said um the jiggle physics really does attract a lot of people <laughs> it really does then mogi it's monomogi uh bread blink twice if you're being held gunpoint right now and i said blink and blink. but yeah uh <laughs> it's funny it's funny um there is also micah who is uh vexavology people who determine your fate through a screen that is actually very I don't know how to answer to comment on that one because eh, this is like um I don't know how to comment on that yet basically. And iMac PH, uh, iMac just recently followed us a few minutes, a few hours ago. Easy, VTubers are a gift from the gods. To be honestly speaking, um VTubers are very interesting to watch. Because they uh mostly some of them really do, do stick into character or they like um focus on you know their uh, they focus on their characters or if they don't focus on their characters you can relate to them because some of them has like mental issues that they you could, they want to talk about there's a lot of them there uh, i can say it's uh the vtubers right now are very very diverse there is a vtube it's not not just the avatar like their personal uh per um their uh, personal characteristic as well are very very diverse i uh, really do agree with that one they are really gift of the gods it's like there are a lot of vtubers that you could relate and i agree with that one 
Now that's that's all from the Twitter side. So I'm gonna go to my Facebook questions, which is a lot less. So we could just uh surge right into this one then after this we're gonna read the comments again then i'm gonna ask you those who are watching right now how would you define a vtuber as well this is from uh gira and he did like a lot of emotes out of nowhere looks like an airplane a unicorn a bird t-shirts pants and stars i don't know what that means but he commented someone who makes content while playing a character usually live streams um keyword here is someone who makes content while playing a character which is actually most of content creators are right most of them are because if you think about it like pewdiepie pewdiepie doesn't really act that way on live or let's say hmm doc at doc adam you know Doc Adam as well. There is also where the Fil famous Philippine. Ah, Tyron Taiga, very well known on TikTok. He doesn't act like that normally though. So they there is still IRL people, but do, but do play as a, play a character. You know you don't you don't see uh, Taiga slapping random people on the streets, right? If he disagrees with them, and PewDiePie doesn't like uh, <laughs> doesn't like scream wildly. But, you know, his IRL characteristics is seeping out for PewDiePie because he have done this for the longest time. But if you look at the earlier videos of PewDiePie, he does play a character and he does not use any model. Well, he did, he did became a VTuber at one point. <laughs> okay, uh, from Arya Berutoro. Is that Biot? I don't know what but that it means. Noir. Uh, Arcan Light. Yes, I'll define VTubers as any content creator that uses a fictional character or persona as a medium for both content creation and audience engagement. Actually, yeah, I think that will be the very difference of it because in IRL, that portraying a specific character, I think that will be one advantage of it. One advantage of a VTuber for an on an IRL streamer because, um. If you're an IRL streamer and you could you wanted to portray a character, you're very limited because people see who what you are. Whereas as a VTuber, you can have any type of character that you want. Like I said, I'm a piece of bread right now. I could have a character of a bread, or after a few months, I would like turn into a puppet, and I have a character of a puppet as well. So there is a lot of things that you could do as a VTuber that IRLs, in terms of character portrayal. As compared to an IRL streamer, uh, a content creator, I think that's. I think so far that is one advantage of being a uh, VTuber over an IRL content creator. From Andre Clifford Larax, YouTuber but virtual that uses a fictional character as their avatar and makes many people smile or something. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. That is true. They use they. We're technically a fictional character and we do bring content that may or may not put smile on people, you know. Revna replied. Revna is also a VTuber who is a battle sheep. I think she's not a battle sheep anymore, but she's a sheep. Said, shoot me and stop wasting my time. <laughs> then Maria Mira Francine Armian commented uh Coco Kiryu. Kiryu Coco actually. He said Coco Kiryu, yeah. Which is actually, if it's a Western name, it is Koku Kiryu, but it's a Japanese name, so Kiryu Koko. Which is, like I said, it is very, very true. And I'm going to discuss a little bit of Koko afterwards, after this one. Which is very true. You would really define one of um, uh, Kiryu Koko. Like, if you think about VTubers, Kiryu Koko is one of those that will pop out on your head. Like, if you're going to recommend somebody um, a VTuber, Kiryu Koko would be it. And if so far as I can remember, they haven't deleted her channel and they won't be deleting her channel because, you know, she left on her own, her own accord. And Hunter Okami here replied as well, anime. And like, I think I already commented on this before. And like I said, yep, people um, relate to anime and VTubers given that um, VTubers are like the primary content when 
some of the big animes are delayed because of the pandemic so yeah i could s- see that but again there are a lot of vtubers now that are not anime inspired or not japanese inspired which is um like uh, one of my example again is um honey goblin her her art style is very uh western i would say kind of the western style okay Okay, so before we proceed with um, the next segment, let's read some of lo- uh, read some comments um, from Wendell. Yeah, Cipher's uh, Cipher is literally small. Oh yeah, that, that's Cipher. <laughs> then there is um, Wendell. I'm gonna read that um, to the next segment for those who are, you know. Again, guys, uh, for the next segment, I'm gonna uh, those who are watching right now. Define what is a VTuber on your end and let you know. I want to know. And there's uh, Kutsi underscore Dawn said that Ryan Akahoshi is not an anime inspired, which is true. Um, Ryan Akahoshi is inspired with uh, Tokusatsu, with f- more on the common writer side. And another, and he further commented that, but I guess they're usually anime inspired because it started in Japan. Yeah, I think it is more accurate that. It is more Japanese inspired than anime inspired. Given like you know, there I think there are a few common writer um, inspired um, streams, right? Then there's also Cutsio underscore Dawn uh, comment uh, chatted. Otaku's would pay for that lol. And I think he commented this when I talk about the Jiggle Physics being removed by Hololive, and you can only get that um, via membership stream now. I mean, uh, Choco, Choco Sensei, the she has succubus. Um, her avatar was reworked because he she was uh, showing too much skin, virtual skin, and they added like um, I think they added a action to her avatar apart from changing the changing her outfit. So it shows less skin, and there's also an action where she covers her chest as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but again, I I don't have um the only proof that I could say that Hachama said that the Jiggle Physics is only available in membership stream, and I don't have any memberships at all on any of the Hololive members for me to confirm that. So I do apologize if that is false. I'm only getting the information from what I have uh, told as well. From Wendell Wendell, as Cor said, fan service. Yep, that is 100% fan service. The Jiggle physics from the whole life side. You know, you know, if you really want Jiggle physics, let's go to indie VTubers. Some of them have Jiggle physics as well. And I do prefer the one who is like natural. Because <laughs> there are a lot of our unnatural ones. Like they are just one, you're going to look to the left and they their uh, chest is like moving all around. Which is very weird, you know. From Nimli, hello Nimli, you're over here. Project Melody's travel vlog in Japan was pretty cool. Um, okay, for those who does not know, um, I can't remember who posted that. I think it was Project Melody. Project Melody posted that um, posted a travel vlog video. It was her first time going to Japan, and she was accompanied, or her date was she Buyakaho, which is a content creator over on Twitch. And always there when, <laughs> always there when Sea Dog VA goes to a cafe, you will always see Shibuya Kaho. So what they did is they put a tablet on the, on a random person, and it uh, shows uh, Project Melody, uh, which is that is their work around on, on VTubers doing travel vlog videos. But it's for me. It's a lot, a, a big. It's a big. Uh, it's not big. It's like there's a lot of steps to to it. And for those who doesn't know, the guy behind the, the, the Project Melody is also a streamer on Twitch named High Guy. His name is High Guy. Um, I have rated him before, and I have watched his stream. He is very entertaining. He's a Japanese streamer that can speak in English as well. And he has a VTuber model, and his VTuber model is so funny. It's uh, 
very what i call this very cartoonic it doesn't flow like if you're gonna if you're gonna some avatars life to the avatars if you look to the right it will show like the head turning left or left turning right for him it's like if you look left it will instantly look left so there is no motion at all which is very very funny but he doesn't uh you know he for the most part he does more irl streams and he's fun to watch he's fun to watch i do recommend high guy as well high guy it's a h i g h g a i g a i not guy that g u y it's not it's g a i he's uh, he's an awesome streamer as well i do recommend that but again um i think if you're gonna go for a travel vlog I think people will not will see interest that if you're a VTuber who does travel vlog, but I think people would prefer you like experiencing it yourself or eating the food right there. Unlike what is happening, uh, you know, what is being uh, what do you call this? What is being shown? You know, what is just being shown on a video. Um, from Cutsio again, you can make uh, vlogs, but as video uploads. There are apps where you can use a 3D model, like as a VTuber. Uh, again, but in that case, you are limited to just 3D models. There's like I like for me, I am a live 2D model, so I can't do all of those, and and it is more what I call this organic for you to do show your face in doing those travel videos. Because it's very, for me, in my opinion, I am not much invested on the streams of travel videos. If it's if it's an avatar, if I go, if I want to go to travel videos, I want to see them how they enjoy the 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 travel going there, like riding the bus, riding the train, riding the airplane, and what the food did they eat. I want their reaction. I want to see them eat as well. I want to see them experience something, like go on the um go to the bath um uh, public bath like that that you could again public hot spring that you're allowed to video no <laughs> i'm not saying that go there just film everything like it, i want to see them experiencing it as well and for me if it's a vtuber i'm I, i'm not i'm not really sure if uh i would like that actually Again, um, from Hunter Okami. Hi, hello, Hunter. Sorry for just uh, reading your comments because again, one of the rules is I will only read. I will not read the, the chat real time. I'm gonna read the chat in between segments so I could, you know, keep uh, the flow of the podcast going. And namely, again, augmented reality with VTuber models. I could see that happening. A lot of people have already done that. Um, one VTuber on Facebook would be Cornelia. Uh, Cornelia does a lot of augmented reality pictures. I have not seen her done a video. Maybe she has done it, but to my knowledge, she's just done pictures. Like uh, she went somewhere and she put her avatar. I'm not sure if Shiorpon does that. I think she got the inspiration from Cornelia as well, uh, where that you could take a picture and you would see your avatar or your avatar moves in that specific picture. But again, um, I would, for me, I prefer the IRL people instead of VTubers and those type of contents. Like if you're gonna go to Japan, um, like I, which is was was my content. My, I was planning to go to Japan around this year, but did not fall through because you know the pandemic happened. Um, that's the re whole reason why I have a plushie. So I would use that to showcase. Okay, guys, I'm here somewhere and I'm a plushie. So a plushie is like a representation of myself. And I'm not really sure what people would like that concept because it, it, in my case, I would still prefer some IRL stuff, seeing me enjoying food, you know, doing a live stream, and you would see see me walking around in Japan. I was planning to do that, but instead of showing my face, it would show my plushie. Which is actually very interesting, but unfortunately, you know, pandemic happened. I'm gonna try that next year, though. I'm gonna try that next year. Real love, sure. Next goes to. Okay, let's um, let's go uh, acknowledge the follow. Tell uh, thank you, Ari Nishimoto. Thank you for the follow. Thank you so much. Okay, let's move to the next segment. So I want to know for those who are watching right now. 
how would you define VTubers in your perspective? If you haven't answered my Twitter yet, or my Twitter or on my Facebook, I want to know. I want to know. So this portion of the podcast, I would interact with the viewers right now. So feel free to chat. I'll read them real time right now. So I will go back to the chat of... Uh, Wendell. Wendell said, for me, VTubers are an identity, I guess. When someone uses 3D or 2D model that is rigged and identity them, identify themselves as VTuber. Yeah, I think that is uh, that is a weird definition, actually. It's like, how would you define the VTubers if they identify themselves as such? Which is actually very... Uh, I forgot how it's right term. It's like... Even though you define yourself as this one, you should fulfill some requirements as well, right? Um, because like there is like uh, Ratanek has been doing a lot of tweets recently, showcasing that there's a lot of Twitch streamers that is using the VTuber um, tag, which is like why? Which is funny because right now my tag has IRL in it, but I cannot do something about that because when I type the category talk shows and podcasts, the IRL tag is automatically there and I can't remove it. I cannot even see the tag of VTuber and Filipino on my on the other end, which is very, very weird. I don't know why it's not popping out. So very <laughs> it's very, very weird, you know. So technically this is not IRL. I do apologize. I can't remove the IRL tag for some reason. I guess if your category is talk show and podcast, it will be automatically there. And there, I don't, I can't remove it. I can't remove it at all. I'm trying. I tried removing it on OBS Studio. I'm trying to remove it on uh, on the Twitch itself. It doesn't do it. <laughs> it's very, very weird. Okay, from Karimaki Chan. Hello, Karimaki. How are you? Her chat was a nice discussion. Thank you so much. Nimli Channel said, Travel videos would be difficult for sure. I can only imagine faceless types of vlogs with, with your avatar as a narration. Yeah. I think it will be very, very difficult to do that. But I, th I guess there's an argument that there are also content creators out there that doesn't show their face but just do travel videos. But for me, I prefer those people. I want to see their expression if they eat it because, you know, they could just say, oh, I like it. Because there are, there are a lot of videos that you could see eating Japanese food and some of them are not saying that it's not delicious at all. But you can see on their face that they don't like it. <laughs> um, Chris Broad, well, Chris Broad, uh, he is authentic. So if you say he likes it, I think he, he, he really does like it. But well, there are others that you could see that they eat something. They will pretend that they, they say, oh, I like it. But their face says otherwise. <laughs> it's, it's very funny. I forgot the channel. I don't well, I don't want to call them out, to be honest. So I'm not going to tell their channel. Okay, let's get back to... Okay, let's continue with the comments with Karimaki. I mean, the only other alternative is travel blogging, which uh, I find fascinating. Ovali is another VTuber who does food blogging, you know, WordPress website. Uh, food blogging, we could do it as a VTuber as well. Um, like uh, Team Mikage, again, one who inspired me to become a VTuber, is actually do food blogging in a sense. Um, in a website, Fanbox, if you subscribe to her there, she would post picture of her dinner, which is actually... Uh, there are also like free, free posts, like... You just need to follow her on fun uh, fan box, and you will see her, some of them. And some of her food is really delicious. And if I can remember correctly, she is the one who made those, which is a very, very delicious. I would say. I want you know, like <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Again, back to uh, like it's more like the vlogs, and I'm talking about like, um, which is very famous in the Philippines right now. Um. Art Evangelista does it. Uh, Ivana does it. Um, the Hungry Syrian does it as well. Like doing what they do every day, or a specific on a specific time. I think that is difficult if you're if you you know if you have an avatar, it, or it not it's not as authentic. I would say. Again, from Karimaki, VTubers are those who have a virtual avatar and character. May. May it be PNG, 2D, or 3D. Only thing separating them is platform right now, but VTubers are the default name, which is I already discussed this as well, which is I would accept that. 
um, right now you should accept that VTubers are people that has virtual avatars and they, they give content in different platforms. Because like I said, it, it doesn't mean if you stream on Twitch, it doesn't mean you're not a VTuber anymore. If they keep saying, okay, you have, you should have a, a YouTube channel, just saying, okay, I have a YouTube channel though. Doesn't have any videos and doesn't have any subscribers. I still have it, so I'm a feature right now. It's just, it's, it's like the semantics, which is I accept because VTuber came from the word uh, virtual and YouTuber, and YouTuber is defined basically are content creators on YouTube. But obviously, the term VTubers has already evolved in the sense that you are a virtual um, content creator. That is actually the more accurate, uh, you know. But let's put the keyword here that uh, the PNG thing, because it doesn't mean you don't have a live 2D avatar or a 3D avatar. It doesn't mean you cannot be a VTuber anymore. Just having a PNG would be enough. Um, one example, actually, um, Nox. Uh, if you know Nox from YouTube, he is technically a YouTuber even before. What he does is he just uses a series of PNGs. He has a default PNG and he has a specific reaction. It will just change. Um, he could do easily do that because most of his content are not live stream. More of them is just uh, edited videos. But right now he does live stream as well over on Twitch. Actually, I haven't. F I think I haven't caught one of his streams yet because I, well, I don't know where he lives, but his time zone is makes it difficult for me to watch him. There is also, um, hmm. But right now he has a, a live 2D avatar, live 2D. Actually, the most popular right now is a live 2. I'm, I'm not sure. Actually, it's a, it's a mixed bag. Uh, there are a lot of popular live 2D model uh, VTubers, and there's also a lot of popular 3D model VTubers. Uh, well. Well, Project Melody is famous in one specific website that we should not, we should discuss. We should not discuss here. <laughs> and there's also a lot more content creators that does what Project Melody does. And it is also in the specific website that we should not speak about it as well. There are a lot of those streamer, uh, VTubers. Basically, if there is, if it's a, um, a platform where you could post video or stream, I think there should be there would be at least one VTuber VTuber out there. Okay, so given that is uh, the only the, the segment of uh, for those viewers right there. Okay, um, Nimli actually have a question right here. What do you think about those who do IRL and VTubing? I might have missed it since I came by late. There are people who feel like face reveals and IRL content ruin the experience. For me, it doesn't really matter, but there are definitely those who don't prefer it. Okay. Um, it is... Uh, I understand that in a sense. Because I understand their feeling because... Uh, um, hold up. It's... Uh, it is better to give an example for me than to others as well. So you could get the clear clarity of what they're meant. Because right now we're talking to a piece of bread, right? If I show my face, you're not actually thinking me as a piece of bread anymore. You're thinking me as a person. That is somewhat their argument of those people around, uh, those people who doesn't like um, content creators that does IRL and VTubing altogether. Like, like uh, somebody said to me that the magic of being a VTuber just disappeared. Which I could uh, accept that because there are people like, I'm here for the anime stuff, the, the VTuber stuff. I'm not here for the IRL stuff. Um, for those peop There are people like that. Uh, in my opinion, I don't, don't really care if, if you're a VTuber and will do some IRL stuff or you're an IRL VTuber. IRL content creator and will go to VTubing. Which is funny considering there are a lot of uh, IRL people that did a VTubing, uh, did had a VTuber avatar, and a lot of people try to, uh, what do you call this? Gatekeep them. Which is very funny if they don't like them. If they don't like them. Because there are others that are, uh, there are others that are. Uh, also IRL people and went to VTubing and they like them. Okay, okay, you can come in. <laughs> Selective gatekeeping, I would say. 
But for me, it doesn't really matter. If you are an IRL and does uh, use VTubing avatar, use a VTuber avatar, or a VTuber does IRL shows IRL video, it's fine for me. I don't think it ruins the experience, in my opinion, because um, what do you call this? It does not ruin the experience because you're still uh, getting the content that you want. Um, which is actually something that they uh, we need to address actually like there should be like a bu uh, the bubble should burst now in the VTube community to expand more and that will be a lot of things that you could consider um, there are also uh, what I call this let's see so it is very interesting I really do enjoy uh, that as well um hmm I I'm thinking of a VTuber that does IRL stuff that I watch. Not IRL stuff, IRL stream. Which is there is no well there is one though. There is one. Um <laughs> Um let's just say there was a former Hololive employee that uh left Hololive and does IRL streams now. Oh, she, uh, she is one of those one of those people basically did that ruined experience for me it enhances the experience there is a lot of people that enjoyed um, enjoyed her as well you know I won't say the name because I don't know would it be doxing I think it could be doxing so I'm not gonna say her name though but you know who she is it's an open secret but I will not do it and like I said um in in my opinion in the future i might not be a vtuber as well because like i said there are a lot of things that i want to do that might that is limiting it because i'm a vtuber like i said maybe if i get a lot of recognition a lot of um uh a lot of recognition a lot of followers like people would want to know what does the life day in the life of Sir Reed Bread or the IRL stuff. That is something that I want to showcase, right? That's something I want to showcase. That is, uh, you know, mm, long story short, is like something that I would like to show. If And it's in the same logic as changing into a different game, right? There are people who would not like the new game that you're going to showcase, but it's up to you on what you want to deliver. And for, you know, you will lose, you will lose people, but you may gain a lot more. Um, okay, be, given that Akosi Doggy did not change his character, that is one of his success. To be honest, even though there are a lot of people who doesn't uh, really like him right now because what he is doing, um, you cannot, ex you can, you cannot uh, deny that when he went IRL, that's when he started getting even more popular. He was very popular when he was just a virtual dog with a gaming headset and he got more popular when he when he started doing uh, daily vlogs now he is more much more popular i would but he's the most popular out there in terms of from uh after becoming a vtuber and i think in my opinion in the future people might do a lot of vtubers more uh will do face reveal from vtubers shifting to irl i think there in the future it will come a time would, would do that i mean it's it's fine though it's fine in my opinion again this is a segment where i will interact with the interact with the viewers so let us acknowledge quinn blood rose thank you for the raid thank you so much um i do apologize that there's a delay in the acknowledgement of the raid because like i said before i would like to keep the flow of the podcast uh, proper so that's why I'm taking a while for me to read all of the <laughs> all of the comments so let's acknowledge again um, we are Bobos thank you for the follow uh, Adamancer Adamancer Prime thank you for the follow and J Scythetic thank you for the follow and Fivush 26 thank you for the follow as well we just had a Quinn Rose raid and 
Uh, Mitsugi GD said, Get weighed by the Quindom. Get weighed by the Quindom. And that's a repeat. There you go. Um, there's a first time chat. It's uh, Rened CD Pony and said the same thing. Uh, we a boss, yo, hello, we have a boss, how are you? Atlas29k, hello, how are you? Amara Man, thank you as well, first time chat here, hello. Uh, is it TYL Ray? Is it Tile Ray? Hello, and again, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Captain Madness, hello, how are you? How are you? I just keep looking at the other uh, Quinn Blood Rose, hello, Quinn, thank you so much. I could give you a shout out right now, but I, like I said, the <laughs> it is actually muted right now because for the it's for the sake of it. Wow, it is not muted for the shout out, but you can't see it. What the heck? Okay, no. Oh, it's it's hidden. I'm gonna say that again. Hold on. It wasn't muted. Why did it wasn't muted? Well, this is only by command by the broadcaster. So here you go. Oh, that is a good looking avatar. Thank you so much for the rate. Thank you so much. Okay, let's not spam. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about the spamming. Um, it's, I'm just, like I said, I'm delaying. I just delayed because I want to uh, talk about the VTubing side and things. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Nice raid. Hello. Oh, that's from Katsuyo. Matsugi JD. He's having a podcast. Whoa. And Queen Bloodro said, podcast? podcast <laughs> yes from mitsugi jd podcast as well and five wish 26 used the pogging snake and podcasts and rednet uh, c pony said mm, hello i go wendell said hello raiders and queen blood rose of course i hope your day is doing well yes i have do i'm actually about to wrap up the podcast right now there's there's just a few things i need to discuss more then there is a wendell again saying hello we are bo and quinn then i did a double shout out because it doesn't work <laughs> it's so funny but yeah i have to check that why i was in oh yeah i this a i should have put the what do you call this the shout out overlay is uh There you go. I wasn't putting the control audio via, you know, OBS on the specific thing. That's why it made a sound. Should have been muted. But don't worry, guys. We're in the part where I interact with the viewers. So one more part in the segment is future of VTubers. So in my opinion, what would the... How would I see VTubers in the future? You know, it is very interesting. So for me, it's like... They're, they should improve the life 2D more. The life 2D models. Uh, right now, I saw a uh, video. I saw a video where you can... Uh, what is the term, right? Um, there was a video that I saw on Twitter where there is a full body rigging of the life 2D. Wherein... If... If you could use the camera to see your whole body, it will capture your body movements. And it will follow with the live with the live 2D. That is an amazing technology. I'm not sure how it would be, you know, applicable for some because again, live 2D has limitation being a live 2D. And there's also a video where um, a live 2D can turn at least 90 degrees. It was 90 degrees. So fully looking left and right. There um the V tubing model right now is not it's still it could turn. If you can see my avatar, it turns left and right. And you could uh we go, you know. But I think let's say it's around 15% looking to the left, 15% looking to the right. The updated version is like looking as in literally his head is looking to the left. Look, that is the new uh, new technology that I'm seeing for the Life 2D. For the 3D models, I think just maybe just ray tracing, but it was already be done by a lot of 3D models. A lot of VTubers that has 3D models have improved graphics of their models, like much more smoother. Um, the technician does very good. Uh, uh, pretty well for 
her uh, child as well. That is a very realistic uh, 3D avatar. We already reached that point, but unfortunately, she's the only one who does that because her experience, uh, you know, because she has the experience to do it and she has the tech to do it as well. Um, uh, but after that is only improvement for the avatar itself, right? So what content content that you know VTubers can do in the future? The only thing is like I don't know. Well, it's limitation of our current technology. It's like feeling the virtual. You know, there is are there are a lot of virtual concerts right now done by Hololive. I have just seen some screenshots over on Twitter because, like I said, I don't. I can't. I don't invest much on Hollow Life, given I don't understand Japanese. I do apologize for that one. So, like, uh, we have the you know, like three D, right? So, link uh, with height, but the next is would be uh, touching it. Like, touching it is like you could feel the four D in a sense, the four D experience of those things, uh, which is right now it's not really a thing right now. <laughs> Like it would be very very cool if there is like a virtual convention with the, let's say you're a fan of the whole life with the whole life, then you could actually touch their hands for like the sh hand shaking stuff and whatnot. But again, those things is right now limited because that was there is no technology available for that right now. Well, there there are a lot of concepts, but there is nothing that it there is. I think there is, but. It's not available to the public right now. So that is more in the future. Augmented reality in real time. I think that should be a thing right now because like like what happened in Pokemon Go where they enabled the augmented reality, um, they should add that on for streaming because that will, if you're gonna do like IRL, IRL uh, daily vlog videos, uh, like travel videos, that would be better. Uh, that would be cool. And I said stream, not uh, not VODs, because in VODs you could just edit yourself in there. But I'm th thinking about live stream. Like if you're gonna go live stream, it's like in Pokemon Go, your avatar is walking around with you, regardless 3D or 2D, but most likely to uh, 3D because again, in, in a sense of it's a travel video, you could see the back of the avatar and just look at the camera, you know. Again, those are things that I would like in the future, you know. Which is very, very interesting if that would be, uh, that would happen. But you, what do you guys think? What do you see in the future? Um, one more thing that I think people might not accept, might not accept this, is that maybe in the future, majority of uh, VTubers would shift to IRL. I think some of them would shift to IRL. Um, there are already a lot of VTubers on Twitch and on Facebook sharing their irl stuff like uh showing they uh they did cosplay before okay fine they hide their face but on over on twitch it's like we do cosplay here's me wearing cosplay showing the face and all of that um i think people would uh, some vtubers would uh start uh, like maybe abandoning vtubing and start doing irl stuff i think in the future that will very very going to happen that, that will most likely happen. Um, for whereas if the IRL to VTubers actually that happens a lot, that happens a lot right now. Um, some of them are not technically IRL. Some of them doesn't have really face to begin with, and will just have a, a VTuber avatar to add it. So you know, there are a lot of stuff. There are a lot of stuff that that could happen in my end. And in my end, for me, I think if I have exhausted all the concepts I could do as a VTuber, I might do that as well. But right now, I don't think I would do that in the future. I don't. I won't do that right now. I think so. I think so. I won't be doing that. Okay, let's go to the comments, shall we? Uh, let's go here. Okay, from uh, Weebu Boss. Uh, yo, it's me, Kagawa Renu Subred. Hello, how are you? Again, a first time chat from a viewer named Noir, Arcan Light. Hello, how are you? Finally, I can chat here. Hello, hello, sir. But why? You can chat before? 
Then、uh, Wendell asked、uh, Yo from Noir Arcan Knight. <laughs> he said hello to Noir, and he said full body tracking plus rigging. Yeah, it's more. Yeah,、um, the rigging is like. Um, it's a full body tracking for a live 2D, so you would rig that so it would do something like that. Um, based on what I see on the picture, he was using the camera from the Xbox 360. I forgot what it's called. Um, it was the one of those very first time that、uh, the very first um camera known to use a full body tracking. You know, if you know the. Just dance, and there's one more in Xbox、um, that uses the camera. So if you if you dance right, it it uses that specific camera. Then the input is being sent to the live 2D avatar, and the live 2D avatar does all the range of movement, which is actually、um, from what I've seen from that video, it's not as fluid yet. <clears throat> But I think once they got a handle of it, you know. And I think that will become a problem in the future, where because it will make it a lot easier just to have a like a three D model instead.、Uh, Noir Arkan Light said, "Hmm, hmm, okay." And Ar- Noir Arkan Light said, "You seem too small for that chair." No, actually, I'm a bread though, so that is very acceptable, right? From Nimly Channel, the problem with camera tracking for full body is having enough space to show your full body on webcam. My bed needs to disappear to have my full body camera captured. Lol, that is true. Well, well, in the for a full body, um, it depends on the tools that you have. Um, I guess if you have a small room, there is no way. But there are a lot of uh, virt um, VR gears that I think you can use for full full body tracking, and. Uses small small space as well. You use small space. I think a technician,、uh, what the technician do, uses is a full like a suit, an actual suit, and some a little bit trackers on the legs and the wrist. It's、um, it is good, right? I would like that, <laughs> but it's more on like okay, you're you're gonna distance yourself from your PC as a live 2D. So what are you gonna do? How are you gonna do it? How are we gonna play games if you're so far away from a PC? That is one of the issues right there, right? Um, whereas of a 3D model, well, 3D model has that same issue as well. If I can,、uh, same issue as well. But you know, it's like it's an improvement to Life 2D, but would it be a mainstream thing? We don't know. There are a lot of things that you could see in this world that, that you want to happen in public. Some of them already exist, but it's either too expensive to be on public or Nobody's interested. <laughs> We are boss. We are boss. The world is kind of becoming、um, Ready Player One or something. Actually, I cannot understand that reference because I haven't watched that movie yet. We are boss. It also reminds me of the anime Axel World. Again, I don't know that anime, but you know, I'll be interested with that one. Emily Channel says、uh, Facebook announced their goal for their VR to have a singular connected world for VR, kind of like Ready Player One. Again, I don't I haven't watched the Ready Player One thing, but I saw the V the Facebook VR thing. But you need Oculus Rift, right?、Um, again, that will be cool. But the big question is like, there's already a VR chat does that as well, so it doesn't necessarily need to be on Facebook. But then the more question is that、uh, what what you could do next after able to meet each other using through the VR world. Like you want to to feel something. You got, the sense of touch, taste is something that you need to go into because you're with the VR world.、Um, your sense of sight and hearing. Already compensated that in the 3D world, but a sense of smell, sense of taste, and sense of touch, those things you cannot do that yet in the VR world. At least right now, in in you know, it's not yet available to public. I think there are technologies right now, but you know, and it's a college to follow. A、uh, frag, sit fragilities. Thank you for the follow. Hello. Again from Miyabu Boss. Well, there's this VTuber named Freebie Chan who can、uh, shift from IRL to VTubers. I mean, I think in the future, I guess, I, in the future, like they will do a lot of IRL content, show a lot of stuff. Then 
they would stream as a VTuber or they will stream still in IRL. I think that will be a norm in the future. Like, peop it doesn't matter now if you have an avatar. Then let's go back to Wendell, but you need to like mag. Mag iOS if you do IRL. Um, yeah. That's one of the well. I think we, we could accept that that's one of the advantages of being a VTuber. Uh, you don't really need to wear makeup. You don't need to have a good-looking room. Um, that's why when I uh, um Shiorpon was always telling me that you know look uh, uh you should have some RGB on your CPU or in your room and I was like I when I stream it doesn't nobody see my room though so like it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't really want to invest on uh, RGB stuff or good lighting, uh, good uh, aesthetic on my room because nobody see it. I'm a VTuber, right? All those advantages. Like some say they like being a VTuber because they can stream even if they don't take a bath. Well, to be honest, IRL streamers can also do that. They don't take a bath. They just wake up and start streaming. You know, some of them doesn't really need to have makeup as well. <laughs> yeah, that works. That works. You know. Very fun. Um, Dark region. Do you remember me, child slash sir? I can remember. I remember you. Are you the tiger? I can't remember though. It's been a while. Name is familiar. Dark region. But hello, you've been a follower for six months now. Thank you so much. And Wendell acknowledges Nimly. Ha! Ah, nice to see you on Twitch. And Dark region said six months and twenty-six days. Do you remember me? I vaguely remember you, but I cannot recall though. Please, if you're still here, just comment down below if, or, you know, so you can remind me. And Nimli replied, hello, I watch Twitch sometimes. Then Wendell said, RGB equals gamer skills plus 10. I don't like RGB because they make uh, a lot of the PC parts expensive just for additional LED lights. Um, um, I said this in a few tweets before. I'm planning to upgrade my PC because already it's a two year old. It needs some upgrade on the parts, especially on the chassis, because this chassis does not go well with, you know, the uh, airflow. It sucks in the airflow, to be honest. And as well, so right now it has RGB on the motherboard, on the CPU fan, on the and the GPU, and on the chassis as well. But after, buy, if I'm gonna buy the upgrades um no more um no more rgb for the fan no more rgb for the cp for both fans so the only rgb here is the gpu and the motherboard which i have no control and i don't want to buy i don't want to buy a new motherboard motherboards are ex uh, expensive and this motherboard right here is actually very good now this is a tomahawk max Okay, from Miyabu Boss, um, I believe a VTuber because I became a VTuber because I think being an anime character is fun. Again, well, let's go back to the topic before that um, anime characters were the inspiration of some, but right now you could see a lot of VTubers where their avatar is inspired to Western uh, art style. I keep saying Honey uh, Goblin is one of them. But there's a lot more. I mean, each old delirious has a uh, a VTuber avatar made by Iron Vertex. You only use it once as a prank. Um, if you watch a lot of H.O. delirious video um, during April first, it's always April Fool's Day, and he will he will do quote unquote face reveals. And what he did for this year is that he became a VTuber for that day. <laughs> I think he still use it. He still use it sometimes on a video, but more or less he doesn't use any avatar. He rarely use it now. But to be fair, it's very hassle. And he said it to himself. It was very weird for him to stream with a webcam on, for the purpose of tracking, tracking his face with the live two D. He said it was very weird for him because, like I said, he does not do any webcam streams at all. He doesn't. He doesn't show his face. Nobody knows what. Who, uh, what H two O delirious looks like, at least for his fans. Um, the closest thing that you can see to his face is uh, he just got uh, uh, his born girl, baby girl, just got born last year. So if you look at the baby, uh, that would fifty percent look like delirious. <laughs> okay, let's go, Wendell. You really need a good PC to be a VTuber too. I would agree on that one as well because um 
some VTubing software requires a lot of RAM and CPU usage, it uses a lot of that. Um, and my PC is decent enough so I could stream and use VTuber, VTubing avatar. All of my rendering go uh, encoding goes to the GPU because I use this, I use a, um, a capture card for my Nintendo Switch games and the majority of my contents are in the Nintendo Switch. So it's a win-win for me. I do, uh, you know, it's fine. So, okay, um, is there anything else that we talk about? I think that's it for now. So thank you guys for uh, participating from the for our very first uh, podcast. And, uh, and I will try to upload this within the week. I'll do a little bit of editing, cut some stuff off, like, you know, the acknowledging of the chat. I will remove that because if you're, if you're going to go put this on the VOD, you don't know. I would like just focusing it as something that you can only you can just listen. You don't need to watch it. You know, it's it's a podcast. Like it's a it's like a radio show that is uh what you, what's the right term with it? Like uh, on demand on demand radio show. So I would I might edit the vod on my YouTube would be like a blank white. Uh, maybe a black background with uh, the volume stuff happening uh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of might not put the chat as well hide that as well just 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 a voice you know just a voice um, announcement for those who are here right now I will be having my subathon on August 13 August 13 guys let me show you the picture which is where is it <laughs> Let me add it real quick. Oh, wait, what? Right now, I'm not going to add this part in the VOD, so it'll be fine. Okay. There you go. Okay, for those who are watching the stream right now, I'm going to have... Um, for those who, who are here, August 10 is my second year anniversary. But I will not celebrate my anniversary today. I'll be celebrating it on August 13, which is on Friday. And on Friday, I'll gonna be having my very first subathon over here on Twitch. I will start at 10 a.m. GMT plus 8. And it will be at least 12 hour stream. It could go much longer. It depends if I could do it. <laughs> So you can see on the screen the sub goals. Um, it is funny. The tenth one is I will tell my IRL birthday. You will be surprised when my, when will my birthday is. Um, there's also you know tweet something every hour. There's the fire noodle challenge. I have the noodles as well. Uh, for the L play visage, um, I did not put that. I was supposed to do that during subathon, but um, I thought about it and was like, you know what, I. I might not even reach 40 subs. <laughs> so I'm not going to put that in my schedule. Oh, we were boss. Thank you for the sub. But you should have uh, subscribed during the subathon, which is on Friday, though. So it would count, right? Then there's also the 50 subs. Uh, 50 subs and above that starts for me starting to, you know, use IRL money, which is commission a bread XGR pun emote that will be added. Well, always have a sub, sub. You, well, always have a sub away. <laughs> Seventy-five subs will request for a bread loot on Skeb. Um, um, the Skeb um might not be uh, the bread loot might not be on Skeb because again the problem with Skeb is like they should accept it, and I don't think they might accept having a bread loot. So I know someone that could do br um, a bread loot and we can commission him or her 100 subs I'm gonna give, give 10 give sub to a streamer so this is uh, this is not giving to myself um, the chat will g I'll ask for chat give me five names that you you want me to give a sub to and I'm gonna give them 10 give subs so it's a way to give thanks and 150 is a giveaway either from Steam or PayPal I should add how Put how much it is, I guess. Then, if we reach five thousand sub goals, you know what? Let's have a face reveal stream. If it reached five thousand subs, the cheapest five uh, sub right now in the Philippines is 100, 100 pesos. So one hundred times five thousand. 
5,000. That's half a million. So if you give me half a million on during the Sabathon, oh, sure, what? Why not? Let's do one IRL stream. It's worth a shot, yeah? <laughs> I will see. You never know. Then we have a uh, give sub incentive that I'll do a hand drawing of anything that you want if you gave 10 or more gift subs. Uh, as you can see, there is no incentive if you send a donation or or give bits because the whole purpose of a subathon is for me to get more emote slots. And you can only get that emote slot is via subs. Um... Um, there's also other ways to increase the sub goals and I will announce that on Wednesday but I'm gonna tell you in advance guys there is a segment called um, I'm gonna put I think I could upload it hold up uh -huh. <laughs> okay here's the schedule there's a schedule there is a part here around 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. I laugh and I give sub it's basically uh, you will join my Discord server and there should be a channel. It's not yet available. I'm going to put it on a Wednesday. There will be a channel there where you're going to um, post any funny videos that you can see on YouTube. And if I laugh to it, I will give you a gift sub. And that counts as one of the sub goals. Um, the maximum, I guess, would be 15? You could send as many videos as you like, but I think I'm going to put a timer there. Like, you can only put every th hour, a video every th 30 minutes, I guess. A video every 30 minutes. Um, if you have a give sub, you could already want to give sub or already sub, you could give it uh, choose anyone or let um, make it random. It's your choice, but you know, that is the goal. That's one. And there's also the Gartic phone with viewers. Uh, the Cardiac phone with viewers, it depends because, like I said, I'm not sure if a lot of people were gonna watch me on the subathon. Um, it's you know, I'm still not sure, so I, I'll put Cardiac phone there. Um, some of this might subject to change as well. Um, if you look at the schedule, just chatting will be at the first hour, and we're, and we're gonna go Stream Raiders Dungeon. Uh, Stream Raiders Dungeon is different from the normal Stream Raiders, and as you can see, we're gonna play Stream Raiders the whole stream so for those who play stream raiders you are gonna enjoy it um, i'm not sure if people might stay um for the minecraft and pokemon unite i put those there um 1 p.m 3 p.m people might not be uh you know might be the low point of the subathon because you know i'm not sure i'm not sure about this one then they're also pokemon unite then we're gonna go back for chess chatting at 6 p.m and some little bit of marbles i'm not sure if i'm gonna give away something for the marbles um i put this for the reason is that it's a quick rest for me then you know quartic phone and i laugh and i give a sub um there might be a, a lot more things to be added here or changes but so far this will be our our uh mm, this will be our goal, actually. So, like you see here, Weebuba said, well, anyways, have a subway, <laughs> even if you're already a bread. <laughs> Pog Weebo. Again, thank you for the sub. But yeah, again, guys, I still have a subathon August 30th. I hope you can support me. Um, this actually concludes my stream here, my podcast. Uh, I might edit it tomorrow. I will, I will. I need to go to rest because later at 9.30 p.m. I'll be still streaming and I'm going to continue um, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin and I think we're about to finish that. Maybe mid-August we'll be finishing that which is next week. Actually no. Next week is not mid of August but I think by August we're going to feature that game. So we're going to keep playing that. So okay. Before we end the stream, let's see who we could raid. Let's see who was active. Um, if you guys have any suggestion on who to raid, just let me know. Right now, I'm looking on who we could raid. Mad Wolf is live. And he's doing our stream. You know what? Let's do it. Let's <laughs> Mad Wolf is... Uh, Kahiru's... Uh, Kahiru's um, manager, if you do guys didn't know. Uh, is it manager is the right term? Or one of his lead mods, actually. Is a manager, right? Yeah. So he is doing an art stream and looks like he's finishing up some commissions. And again, guys, thank you for 
being with me for the ver- for my very first podcast um again this might um i'm actually confused with it's um i i uh it's mad wolf then i and wolfy because both of them are wolf for some reason <laughs> the two well-known vtubers in the philippines have um is Ma- is uh wolfy a manager of lyrica i can't i can't remember i know um hero is uh uh hero's manager is wolfy but i don't know if uh wolfy is lyrica's manager and to be fair i'm if i'm going to get a ho um a co-host yeah because we talk in kahiru's server <laughs> oh i see um um if i'm going to have a co-host i am one of the people that i'm looking into then i said to him is this wolfie <laughs> oh shoot um uh let's continue this like if i'm going to have a co-host that's th- um my prospect would be uh hero if you know hero hero yuki orion which is the the alien ambassador from another planet and also Rian Akoshi. I think those two are the ones that is, I think, good. It's, it is good to be uh, to be a co-host for this show. But again, I want to see the success. Yes, but Hiro been in semi hiatus. Yeah, I mean, I'll just invite. It doesn't really mean that um, he would always be on the show. I could like guess him for now, and maybe if he likes it, might do a regular. Again, this is just a pilot episode, so it does not mean I'm going to do this monthly. I want to see how the pilot episode performs as well on Twitch, as well as if I put it Devon on YouTube. And I, if it does well, I will do three more episodes, and hopefully I have a co-host. Hopefully, you know, you know, something like that. So with that being said, let's raid Manwolf now. Um, the last... Um, let me see where's mad fool right now he's doing an art stream again but he is in a brb so if we jump in there right now i don't think he will notice yeah i don't think he will notice if he just jumped in right now okay i think so mm. yeah that's fine okay let's raid mad wolf oh shoot so thank you guys for watching this podcast. Thank you for the support. 9.30 p.m. GMT plus 8 will be streaming Monster Hunter Stories Wings of Ruin over on Twitch over here because our next stream on Facebook will be tomorrow. Same time, 9.30 p.m. GMT plus 8 and we're going to play Pokemon Unite. I might hype some guerrilla streams between uh, in the morning or in afternoon because given I have a week off, I have nothing else better to do. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to start right now. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys later. Goodbye, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.